a Gulfstream G150 tail number November 19027 Golf ran off the end of runway 34 at Chicago Executive Airport on September the 3rd 2025 just afternoon it ended up nose first through the fence belly on the grass and uh, luckily there were no fire and there was no injuries but clearly something serious went wrong here this was a simple flight from Baltimore to Chicago, about an hour and a half's flight. Weather was not perfect, but it was manageable. Light rain, wet runway, some wind, but nothing crazy. So how does a jet like this with experienced pilots on board overrun the runway? That's what we're here to figure out. Uh, so let's dig in and uh, walk through what we know right now. When the jet uh, arrived into Chicago Executive Airport, the weather wasn't terrible, but it wasn't ideal either. Just before the crash, the meter showed wind from 260 at 10 knots, uh, gusting to 17. Light rain, overcast skies around 9,500 feet. Earlier, it was pretty much the same light rain, overcast at 10,000 and wind from 250 at 9 knots. Let's give us a clear picture of a full crosswind from the left around 70 to 90 degrees off the runway heading, which is uh, runway 34, so 340 degrees. Jets like the D-150 can handle that without any problems, but it does require attention from the pilots, especially on a wet runway. And uh, the runway was wet, it was not flooded, and there was no standing water, but wet enough to reduce braking action. And that matters a lot when we're dealing with a 5,000 feet runway. And add in the crossway component and the fact that this isn't a long feel for a mid-sized jet, and uh, now the margin for error gets a little bit tight. Too fast, too long, and you're running out of runway very fast. And uh, we'll see if that's what happened here. Let's take a quick look at the runway because it really sets the stage for what happened. The plane was landing at the Chicago Executive Airport in Welling, Illinois. The runway at use runway 34, and it's the main runway used by jets at this airport. It's 5,001 feet long pointing almost straight north, 340 degrees on the compass. Now, here's the thing, for a mid-sized business jet like the Gulfstream G150, that's not a lot of payment. It's enough, but it doesn't give much room for error. You can't just float down the runway or come in too fast. You gotta be on point. At the far end of the runway, there's something called an EMAS. It's short for Engineered Material Arresting System. And it's basically a crushable surface that's designed to slow down the plane in case it runs out of runway. And here's something I want you to take note of, the uh, taxiway Lima 2 and Kilo 2. They are way past halfway on the runway and later they're going to help us measure just how far down the plane was still airborne before it landed. The Gulfstream D-150 is a mid-sized business jet with twin engines, uh, fast cruise speeds and built for trips across the country or just uh, a quick hop to a, uh, another state. It has a maximum takeoff weight of 26,100 pounds, maximum landing weight of 21,700 pounds and a basic empty weight of about 15,200 pounds, fuel capacity just over 10,000 pounds. And at normal cruise uh, speed, it'll burn around 1,250 pounds of fuel each hour. Based on uh, the flight history of this jet, it usually starts the day in Chicago and flies out to places like Baltimore th that it did this day, and then comes back in the evening. Each leg is normally around one and a half to two hours. So let's do some uh, estimating. They probably fueled up in the morning uh, with enough for both legs, maybe five and a half to six thousand pounds of fuel. After flying to Baltimore and back, they likely burned around 3,800 pounds of fuel um, on that trip. And that leaves about 1,700 uh, to 2,200 pounds of fuel left uh, on landing. Add in two pilots, two passengers, and a few bags, say around 1,000 pounds of payload. That gives us an estimated landing weight of 
around 18,100 to 18,400 pounds, well under the maximum limit of 21,700 pounds. The weight wasn't an issue here, as we can clearly see. So what might have been an issue? Well, this jet was about 100 to 150 feet above the runway as it crossed the threshold, and it was flying over 140 knots, maybe even 143. And uh, for this jet, it's too fast. Normal landing speed called VREF uh, would have been around uh, 120 knots is if the estimated weight is correct. Um, the VREF at maximum landing weight is 129 knots. So they were coming in hot and they were coming in high. At first the approach looked uh, quite normal. The Gulf Stream was coming in uh, over the lake holding a steady uh, 2,600 feet barometric. That's about 1,900 feet above the ground. Totally standard for, for this stage of the arrival. Uh, even the airspeed, uh, while a bit high, was similar to what we've seen on previous flights. Uh, this aircraft often stays often stays fast over the approach and then slowly slows down uh, before uh, before touchdown. But this time things didn't slow down uh, like they should have. About one mile from the runway, the plane was at 1,150 feet. That's around 400 feet above the ground, doing about 130 knots. That's right around uh, re-riff, uh, like I said earlier, for a heavy uh, G150. So, so far, so good. But then instead of bleeding off speed, they uh, started gaining it. As they descended from uh, 1,150 feet to down to uh, 170 feet above uh, the runway, the speed climbed to 146 knots. And uh, that is clearly way too fast for touchdown, especially considering uh, the landing weight might have been only around 1,100 to one, uh, 18,100 to 18,400 pounds, and a uh, V-ref of about 120 knots. So it could have been as much as 26 knots too fast. And they were already um, just a few seconds from crossing the threshold, so too high, too fast, and now carrying too much energy to land and stop safely. The approach wasn't bad all the way in, as you can see, but the final seconds really unraveled it. At 17.11.28 Sulu, the Gulfstream crossed the runway threshold right at Lima 5 and Kill 5 intersection. But it was not ready to land. It was still flying, still fast, still high. Uh, at that moment, it was probably flying at 143 knots uh, and there was 150 feet above the runway. So they might have been as much as 20 knots uh, too fast and uh, still way, way too high to flare. So they just kept floating. Uh, they passed uh, several interceptions all the way down to Lima 2 and Kilo 2, where they still were airborne. Um, of course, bleeding off speed as they uh, they went down the air, uh, they went down the runway, but no touchdown happened. At the 750 uh, feet mark here at the ADSB data, you can see halfway down the runway, they're at 50 feet above the ground, still doing 139 knots. Uh, eventually, eventually, they touched down uh, maybe around 115 knots, but uh, then only quarter of the runway uh, was left. And uh, just before they overran the uh, run runway, uh, they were still doing about 102 knots. So even with full reversers and uh, full brakes, the, that uh, was just not, not enough uh, runway to um, to come to a, a stop. Uh, they were not going to make it. Um, so this was not about a failure of the airplane. This was about speed, too much energy, and a missed go-around. So the final part of the landing is a little... Um, more complicated to explain. Um, they drove into the EMAS at uh, around 102 knots uh, and 
they decided not to stay in it. Uh, they went off to the left and uh, onto the grass. Why? Um, we don't know. Um, maybe they tried to steer out or maybe they just drifted off the center. Uh, it could be that they thought that uh, they could uh, roll off to left to the grass and uh, avoid hitting the fence. Um, whatever the reason the result is what matters they ended up in the grass uh, and they ended up in the face centimeters from a busy highway but uh, luckily it ended up uh, without any injuries had they just continued straight ahead uh, they might have stopped even before uh, hitting the fence and it's really about it's it's really what this is about using the the emas it's what it's constructed for it's what it's there for it's there to stop planes and and not uh, you're not supposed to to drive away from it but in the end everything went right uh, not everything went right but everything went well so that's uh, really what what matters if you made it this far, thank you very much. This video takes a uh, lot of research to put together and a lot of time. So uh, if you got something out of it, please uh, give me a like. It helps uh, the video reach other people. And uh, if you want more deep dives like this one, then hit the subscribe. Uh, it means a lot to me and it helps the, the channel to grow. And let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, was this a case for a go around uh, or did they uh, do everything right? Would you have done something different if you were the pilot flying this plane? Uh, I'm gonna read every comment. So um, please feel free to comment as much as you can. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll uh, see you in the next one.